It's been a busy weekend here at Michigan State, all part of our collegiate waterfall tour. And in this video, we're gonna be talking about camera equipment, things we like, dislike, kind of just show you guys what we use on a day-to-day on -day basis. So stay tuned. My name is Derek Christians. I am the ca kind of campus waterfowl guy. You could you could kind of say I'm the guy that's behind the camera on on, on all these trips, um, make a you know an occasional appearance in, in the podcast and everything. But I figured this weekend would be a good opportunity to talk through uh, camera equipment, just because um, we're here at Michigan State, and if you recognize the guy to my left is because he was actually in one of our waterfowl research tour videos uh, up in North Dakota this last summer. So if you guys haven't checked out that video, uh, I'll link it above uh, on YouTube here. But uh, I'm sitting here with Matt Mezowitz, who's a undergrad student here at Michigan State. Matt, how are you doing today? Doing great. <laughs> um, had a great weekend of hunting, a great weekend of picture taking and some videography and uh, got to enjoy some great weather uh, and enjoy the opener. It was, it was nice. a good time. So Matt here, I, I got, yeah, I think I knew who Matt was dirt before going up to, to North Dakota um, from his photography. He's, he's been sharing some photos and stuff to Campus Waterfall. Um, I would call him to the level where he's at, in my eyes, a professional waterfowl photographer. To kind of jump into this video right away, um, as you can see here on our makeshift table, uh, fire pit here, um, <laughs> two different setups for two different uses. And so the, one of the biggest questions we get asked, and I think a lot of people ask is, yeah, what's, what's the best camera? What's the best lens? Um, and so rather than diving into the specs of the cameras and things like that, we're gonna, just gonna strictly tell you our equipment um, and then kind of our thoughts and maybe even through our conversations we might have like something about maybe if I were starting out, I would get this lens. Yeah. Um, and so, but this is kind of what we built for our day-to-day, -day, I guess, adventures out in the field, you could say. This, this here, I have a, a Canon R5, which is kind of Canon's new uh, push for mirrorless. It came out about a couple years ago, I think, but it's still probably in my eyes, I would say the most relevant um, wildlife shooting body in the market right now. It's a high megapixel, fast shooting, uh, silent shutter, which is great for shooting waterfowl. Like you want to be as quiet as possible uh, and looking at um, also, uh, like I said, high megapixels. So you can do some cropping and still retain image quality. Um, and then for lens, I got a 500 millimeter Canon F4 Mark II. Um, and this is a high dollar setup, but uh, you don't necessarily need a high dollar setup to succeed in wildlife photography or waterfowl photography. You know, there's a bunch of different options that you can go and I'm, mm -hmm. I'm videography I'm sure is the same same way yeah for sure um, when it comes to like like for my setup it's more so like I'm a one-man crew um, when I'm going on these trips on the on the tour yeah. and so I need something that I can shoot photos with and video um, that that's that is kind of it's not like specialized like this this piece of equipment but it's kind of Kind of in the middle of the road where it's a, it's a good piece of equipment and it can kind of meet that that par level of uh, video photography or video quality and uh, photo quality so for the body that i run this is a sony a7 III. Um, i upgraded this i ran season three of the tour and now running season four on on this body uh, season one and two i actually ran the camera that we're actually recording on now is a sony a6400 a that was the first body i got um, but the difference is between that body and this body is it's just a full frame essentially and there's maybe some other tweaks to the body when it comes to like in body stabilization um, and it, I think it shoots even the same quality of photo um, honestly but just the, the in body stabilization on this one um, and then to uh, being at full frame um, that's kind of what I needed um, and when it comes to photography it shoots yeah I think it's a 20 for photo that's pretty standard isn't it i think 24 meg megapixel yeah um but yeah no, nothing like the 48 um uh, this is good enough for what for what i need um and i can go back and forth between photo and video pretty quick by having um settings all presets on, on the camera body made so um on a when you're waterfowl hunting you gotta switch back and forth especially if you're a one-man crew uh back and forth real quick and so having those settings set uh, definitely help 
Um, what about some other equipment that you have? Like I see like this, this bottom piece, that's not part of the body. That's right. Right. Uh, what, what's kind of your kind of accessory pack look like? So I have currently on here, this is a kind of an extended battery grip. Um, and this is honestly just for longevity of battery life. So I'm out shooting for, from anywhere from an hour to six hours to, you know, sometimes even more. So I want to kind of maximize my battery life as much mm -hmm. as I can. So bringing along, making sure you have as many batteries as you possibly can. Uh, I mean, especially in his case, cause he's powering a lot of stuff at once. And mm -hmm. again, that takes battery and it takes card space. That's another thing is you're running some different cards on these cameras. Um, and you all gotta, you gotta take into consideration videography and shooting at high rates of speed. You're gonna wanna be having a, a card that's pretty beefy that can handle uh, what these cameras are putting out. And um, so a battery grip, grip is something I would definitely consider if you're gonna be shooting uh, any sort of uh, bird photography, waterfowl photography. Uh, anything like that. Yep, yep. And some like kind of looking at my setup more so kind of going back and forth between video and photo. Um, obviously for the mic, photographers, they don't, they don't need, need the mic on top. Um, and so for a mic, I got a Rode, I, I believe this is a, a Rode Mic Pro Plus, I believe it's the plus version. Um, and then I got for SD cards, yeah, just two 128 gig. Um, uh, SD cards and then I got a cage to kind of help protect the body while I'm kind of running around and, and it helps too with like stabilization adds a little weight and so being able to level it and it just kind of helps with holding the whole body um, in general and then actually if you if you can see I got two little hook-ons where I can put like uh, just a, a neck strap around um, the, that kind of helps with some getting some steady shots um, I don't go with the like using a gimbal or anything i know some guys do use gimbals out in the field or actually actually i would say majority don't but um i just choose not to just because it's kind of just a, a piece of equipment that i don't know it's nice to have but it's it doesn't make the cut when it comes to um uh, uh, just kind of running gun content that that i yeah. do so that's an, another important thing like understand the equipment that you're getting like is it actually going to make my content better or is it kind of just going to be a pain hauling it in in and out of the field a lot of the time yeah so and, and you can kind of see on the sides of us like this is my bag and they're literally probably about the same yeah. size yes. um I, I just got a pelican uh one of their air uh cases just because with traveling in, in airports and stuff makes it easy where i don't have to ch check it or anything i can haul everything in here yeah, you gotta... I got a Mindshift Backlight 36 liter. Um, I actually picked this up from uh, Hunt's Photo. Uh, it's a great bag, holds all, I mean, I can fit a 500, I can fit two bodies in there. Um, and a couple smaller lenses if I wanna be doing some, some close up stuff, but uh, holds a lot. It's rugged, as you can see, it's, it's actually beat. I got dirt all over it from this morning cause I was shooting, we were, shooting on the side of a trench so you just you know it's a good bag to throw around and keep all your camera camera mm -hmm. stuff uh, number one dry uh, and number two just clean and and tidy mm -hmm. i guess I didn't, I didn't even talk about the lens that i got uh it's lens kind of my all-in-one lens that i kind of use um i would say 90 percent, 90 95 percent of the content that i'm yeah. um actually putting on the videos that you guys are watching our shot on this lens it's a 24 to 105 um, lens from from sony into f uh, i think it's four yeah f4 so it's a great great lens for for what i need like obviously you can go to the, the 24 to 70 route um or even yeah that, that that perfect kind of setup is that 24 to 70 and then what is it that 70, 70 to 200. 200 if you want to do some longer so, stuff. Um, yeah. Those types of lenses with with that low f stop definitely um, are kind of that that, that premium uh, lens. But like for what I need and, and what I what I do for uh, the type of content I shoot, this is all I need. I don't need to go out and spend thousands of dollars. I just need kind of just this. Um, but now like now that we are getting further along, I'm looking at like we actually just got a. Uh, two to six hundred Sony, uh, so that helps kind of getting those far out shots or super close up shots of the birds um, coming in. Um, or if we do have a second camera guy out there, having them on 
the birds and then another camera on kind of the people in the blind. You might have noticed throughout this video, I have my cell phone here as well. That's actually a piece of equipment that I use as well when it comes to videography. Um, this is, I just, it's, the, it's a little beat up. I don't use the cases or anything, but uh, <laughs> it's a, uh, what is it, an iPhone 12 Pro Max. So I shoot, whenever I'm doing video, I make sure I'm shooting in 4K uh, at 30 frames with that. And then I'm always, I'm always down resing my uh, videos down to 1080. Um, and so having that small sensor, I can still get as much out of it. And then down resing it uh, just kind of helps. And sometimes you can't even tell going uh, back and forth between different shots. And, and a lot of times you maybe you're using five seconds from the phone or, or something too yeah. um, in, in your video, just uh, to help support maybe the story that you're trying to tell. So um, that's another piece of equipment that I use on a regular basis. Um, but what else? We want to dive into our, our bags, kind of see, show everybody what's inside. Yeah, sure. We got, we, do that. we got some time here, but we got to catch a, a plane. Yeah. <laughs> here in about, got to leave here in about 10 minutes. I guess but. one thing I also want to mention before that is um, Derek doesn't really have to worry about, uh, this is a pretty small setup, you mm -hmm. know, it's not, it's not very, it doesn't stand out very much. So he doesn't have to worry about really kind of the camo aspect of, of you know, you go out and you're, you're hunting, you're in the blind, you don't want stuff to see you. And this is pretty, you know, compact. So you don't have to worry about that. Um, but you get a big white lens. If I peel this back, you can see this entire lens is white. Um, and lens coat makes a, a cover for these lens that are camo. Um, and that's probably, I mean, it's part of just, it's part of just like wearing camo yourself. I mean, you put this on your lens, it goes from standing out white to camo. Um, and that's just another part of concealing yourself from, from anything that's gonna be seeing you, so. Mm -hmm. there, there is actually some, I've heard from, from other videographers as well, but um, in those early morning shoots, when they're doing video, they don't like to add like extra light to the scene because they want that kind of all natural kind of look of kind of the headlamp shining on you. Right. But if I do need a little like touch up, this is like an aperture, uh, they call it aperture MC, but it's nice where I can control the uh, light temperature, the brightness of it. And usually like I'm at, it's, one, it's from zero to 100% is kind of the brightness. And usually when I've just needed to add a little extra light, it's like at 2%. It's super minimal um, and then I can change the temperature depending on like what color the headlights of the vehicles are um, or if there's like some LEDs in the background if we're at like like this weekend we we're at the stadium adding more of a, like a, a light a lighter colder uh, color of light so um, thinking of that stuff while I'm in the field I can just quickly change that and that just props literally just got a little cold shoe there and kind of sits up there and I can take it on and off real quick sure um, Definitely. We want to dive into bags at all or any other materials? Um, yeah, I guess another piece I got, I guess, I guess the video, like how much stuff do you got in your bag? Your, not not the a lot. The lens probably takes up the most of the bag. The lens is my, the majority <laughs> of my bag. Um, what about like concealment? Like, are you bringing your blind? Like your, um, yeah, I, I do. I cover? carry, I try and be as compact as I can. Mm -hmm. I carry just in this front pouch here is where I usually like to keep it. I mean, I'll carry, um, Got my blind here, still a little wet from this weekend, but I mean, it, this is a big blind. Like I can conceal myself and fit right in just like anybody else. Nice. And uh, you'll see some footage from this weekend that actually kind of shows me in well, the I could, element. I could even pop it up in this video too. Yeah. Um, cue cue uh, concealment. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, it's, it's, you know, all about being compact and fitting everything into one pack that you can just, mm -hmm. um, to bring along with you and definitely. I get, and then I guess for me too, like when it comes to drones, this is, this is I, this wouldn't be my first choice of drone. Um, this is just a Mavic 2 uh, Zoom. Um, that's what I use, but I got a personal one too. It's a Mavic Air 2. Uh, but right now the hot commodity for drones is the Mavic 3 yeah. when it comes to photography and videography. Um, but I, yeah, that kind of fits fits in here. Um, what else do I got? Plenty of batteries. I do have um, some more standard, kind of if you're wanting some, low, if you're in low light or want some portrait stuff, I got a uh, the 50 millimeter 1.8 lens. Yeah, I also carry this. So I also carry one that, of those. That's a, that's a cheap lens. I think it's like yeah. 250 or something like that, or yeah. even less than that, yeah, um, where it's just a good quality lens to have. I think 
I think if you guys watch a lot of photography, videography, Peter McKinnon's a good uh, yeah. uh, resource on YouTube, and he would he would always call the Canon version like the Nifty Fifty. It is, yeah, it is definitely. <laughs> it's it's you can find it for fifty bucks. I mean, you can yep. take some pretty pretty quality shots with that too, in in terms of just a short lens standpoint. But what else in here? Um, I guess for I got the GoPro black the uh, nine black that's always kind of nice i've been this is probably the trip i've used it the most on honestly yeah. um but it's super nice i can just kind of throw it in my pocket um if i need some i guess content from like maybe when we're getting breakfast from this morning yeah. or if we're going to the football game uh, i was able to bring this in and just get little little shots uh to yeah help with the video in terms of i mean i i don't carry a ton of stuff with me but sometimes you know this is kind of this is too much to to bring with you so mm -hmm. there are a few other options and especially cheaper options on the market if you want to uh, get into waterfowl photography wildlife photography any of it um, the long the longer the lens the better i would say uh, and a lot of these you could find that are cheaper give you kind of a variability so uh, sigma makes a 150 to 600 millimeter mm -hmm. that i actually started out on shooting uh, i shot with the old canon 7d mark ii which is still a very relevant piece of equipment nowadays. So if I had to recommend, uh, if you're starting out, um, I would look into either the Canon 80, 90 D, uh, Canon's R6, if you've got a little bit more change in your pocket, um, and then pairing that with um, the Sigma 150 to 600 millimeter, or Canon also has um, a 100 to 500 millimeter uh, L series lens that is astonishing. It's, it's very compact, I'd say, Fully zoomed out, it's probably coming up to half of my lens. It's, it's in very close focusing distance. You can use it for portraits, you can use it for wildlife, you can use it for anything, and it's a, it's a tack sharp lens. Yeah, there's, there's all different kinds of ranges of affordability. You can, um, like I said, this is an expensive setup, but th there's definitely cheaper ways of going about it and still getting great images as, as well, so kind of looking at, at my setup and if you were kind of starting out or anything like that. Um, if, if you are one that's kind of like me going back and forth between video and photos, I would say a DSLR is probably your option that you want to go with. Um, or if, if you're even going to do like 95% video, 5% uh, photos, I would still, I'd maybe lean toward a camcorder, but maybe, I don't know, depends on Maybe in time you want to get in photography, maybe go the DSLR route right away. But um, I've been telling students, like, if you strictly know that you want to do video, like, that's one thing I wish I would have probably done starting out is starting on a camcorder and then kind of building that setup and focusing on, like, audio equipment. Yeah. Um, kind of all, yeah, that entire rig. Um, and then maybe, at least for the moment, taking, like, screen grabs and things for, like, the thumbnails of the YouTube videos. Um, but I'm pretty sure, yeah, they shoot photos too, but it's not, you're not, I feel like you're not going to line up a shot with a camcorder, more so, rather, compared to a, a DSLR. Yeah. Um, but this was kind of, yeah, the setup I went with. But yeah, if, if you were l looking at just video, I would definitely look into the camcorders. Um, and even, even if you're trying to figure out, yeah, what setup to, like, this build right here, like, honestly, and if you're new to the game, uh, like I tell students to just use your cell phone. Uh, these cell phones now that a lot of these people are picking up are those ones shooting 4K at 30 or even the, some ridiculous uh, specs on them where you can at least get, at least try, because even making that transition from being a hunter in the field to being a, a camera person, um, there's, a, there's a curve there, it takes a little bit of time and I encourage them to just use your phone just to see if you like the process of yeah, being out there just with your like camera or whatever, um, and then also the process of post where you're editing the videos, ed um, editing the the um, the photos, and maybe invest rather than investing in, in a camera rig, invest into like Adobe Premiere or yeah. or some software where you can kind of learn those skills there and before you get this rig and see if you like first like the process yeah. because um, if you don't like the process and you hate that after stuff and you invest say uh, I think this was 1500 this was just under 2000 under 200 or even like the rig that I started on for the tour that was I think about a a thousand dollar uh kind of bundle with a uh, kit lens but then when you add audio i probably spent fifteen hundred dollars on that like rather than spending 
a thousand, and that would I would say your typical person that's getting into his budget's about a thousand, yeah, uh, maybe just under, yeah. Um, but rather, yeah, spending a thousand, you're only spending about maybe thirty or sixty dollars. Like I think that's what Premier's at now, uh, about thirty dollars a month. Or if you're a student, I know they have student discount as well. Yeah, and that's half the battle. Is so. I mean, taking the picture is one thing, and going into post processing with Photoshop or Premiere or any of those. Um, learning how to learn those tools and uh, apply them to your images or your videography. Mm -hmm. um, that's half the battle, honestly. Yep, yep. So, so figuring out if you like that process first. And, and if you do and you, and you feel like maybe it took a month, well, then, yeah, pick a, go out. Maybe you had some uh, time to save up some more money. Uh, go out and maybe and you maybe got some time to do more some more research. Um, yeah, go out there and grab that camera that you think uh, will will suit you best and for what you want to do uh, that that season and then moving forward to uh, what you uh, what you plan on doing. You got anything else that you'd like to share? Well, I guess just be open to. I mean, that comes with anything. Is be open because there's going to be times when you haul this rig or this rig out in the field and you forget the main thing that's driving <laughs> the save the you know your images or your videos that you're taking the main thing is you're going to forget a card or you're going to forget your batteries over here mm -hmm. they're going to be dead you know it's it's all stuff that you you got to accept failure in some way it happens to everybody mm -hmm. um, but don't let any of that you know deter you don't let the money deter you because there's cheap ways of doing everything and getting by and getting images um, so I guess kind of the overall message is just like go in with open arms and experience everything and fail. Mm -hmm. And because and, you're going to miss shots, you're going to miss, you're going to forget to click record. You're going to do everything because it's happened to us all as photographers and videographers. Um, but stick with it because you never know what you're going to see or what you're going to come into and, and make everything your own. I know Derek's got kind of a, um, an eye for what he likes to do with Campus Waterfowl and I, I did the same thing with my images. and. So that's the other thing is make everything your own. Yep. Enjoy it. It's it's it, it's a great it's a great hobby. It's a great job. It's great you know anything whatever you want to make it. Mm -hmm. You can go anywhere with photography or videography for sure. Yep. Yep. For sure. No. I yeah. Trying to plan out the campus waterfowl like look that I wanted. Um, I knew it. Wa I wanted kind of like run and gun raw. But it's like it's weird when you're kind of starting out kind of formulating your own style and I don't know if Campus Waterfowl has a style or not you guys tell me in the comments yeah I see it I, I really do <laughs> but, which is funny well, that's why I said that <laughs> but I, I'm always trying to improve it and I know like for me I, like I, I want to bring more people on to kind of help get the tour bigger and things but it's like I don't know yeah because I, I feel like I, yeah I want the next step things to or the quality of the, the content to go be better but i don't know if like this type of content that i'm currently making is like what my audience is is used to before we go matt how can people kind of follow you and your kind of journey uh, as a photographer well i have i have a website you guys can check out it's uh the wild look photography.com uh, i also post a bit on instagram uh facebook and any of those platforms um, but definitely a lot of my images and stuff are on my website, thewildlookphotography.com. Uh, awesome. awesome. I'll have a yeah, link below uh, for you guys to click on, make it easy for you. Yeah, appreciate uh, it. But no, that's, that's going to do it for this video. I appreciate you guys watching. I hope you learned a thing or two about the equipment we use um, and kind of our thought process of why we picked it um, and maybe some options for you if you guys are getting into it or even if you guys are uh, pretty avid photographers, kind of if you're maybe... I wouldn't look at my setup or maybe as the next steps, but like definitely yeah. Matt's side of things, um, his, his experience running some of these uh, higher, more, I guess, specialized pieces of equipment that are out there on the market um, that you might be considering uh, getting now or later on down the road. Be sure to like, comment and subscribe. Any, feel free to comment for sure. Uh, if yeah. any questions you might have, I'm sure Matt will be in the comments as well uh, to help answer any questions you might have about photography. Yeah. Um, I'll be as Campus Waterfall answering any questions you might have as well. Um, but no, appreciate you guys watching. Be sure to like and subscribe. We got a bunch of stuff planned for this season for sure. Um, and yeah, stay tuned for the next video.